Anissa explained to me that to prove yourself worthy to slender, you would have to kill somebody. Dorian said, we have to kill Bella. If you kill people when they're either asleep or unconscious, and it's also easier if you do not look them in the eyes. When we were kids, a lot of us like think that there's a boogeyman under the bed, there's a boogeyman in our closet, something can get us, or something lurking in the dark. Well, today's video is going to be a story about the boogeyman in a real life almost murder that happens. Before we get into it though, I do wanna let you guys know that this video is for entertainment and educational purposes only. Please remember to be kind to everybody everywhere in your everyday life, in your home, in the grocery store, and especially in the comment section down below. Please do not show hate to anybody, anywhere. Good morning, my lovelies, my beauties, my friends. My name is Christina and welcome to my channel. If you are new here, thank you so much for clicking on this video. I really hope that you will subscribe, stick around, take a chance on hearing some things that I have to say. And if you are a returning subscriber, y'all already know. Y'all are my babies. So good morning, good morning, good morning. How is everybody doing today? I hope you all are having an amazing day. I just cannot help but to giggle sometimes while I'm doing the intro because I literally envision y'all doing it. And I know that a lot of y'all do it because you send me your videos and y'all are so adorable. If you're still doing the intro, give me an orange heart today because we are in October. Whoop diddy whoop diddy whoop. It's Libra season, not to brag or anything, but you know. <laughs> anyway, so in today's video, y'all, this is another wild story involving children. Yes, children. And I think that this video is not only going to be a very interesting story for those of y'all that have heard it, some of y'all have not heard it. Maybe you've not heard some of the details that I will be sharing with you guys today. But this is a very cautionary tale, especially to children that are out there and the parents. Yes, moms, dads, aunts, uncles, papas, all of y'all, y'all need to listen up here. This is gonna be one for y'all to really pay attention to. Before we get into it though, I do wanna let you guys know if you don't already know me, hi, my name is Christina. I do have a second channel, Casually Christina. I do things more casually over there. I also have a Patreon. My Patreon is for 18 and up. Over there, we do more personal story times, a little wild story times, and we go live. Live. It is a good time if you are 18 and up and like to join. We also have a podcast as well as I have an Instagram and all of those are always linked down in the description box if you'd like to come and check me out. So the Slender Man real life case. Have you guys heard of Slender Man before? Well, if you haven't, let me just tell you guys exactly who Slender Man is. Slender Man is a made up character. He was made up years ago online. It was part of like a photoshopping contest. So this man was like photoshopping this creature, this an unnaturally tall humanoid that has on his suit and has super long arms, super long legs, and he's faceless. He has a white face completely. There's many different stories that goes around about Slender Man, some that he, you know, lurks in the woods or he will lurk in your closet and under your bed that he will sneak into your house and have these tentacles that comes out and will strangle you and your whole entire family that he lures children into his mansion where he lives in the woods that he is known for stalking his prey specifically children Slender Man became so known and so popular that they even started making like little movies or little documentaries on him and that people on YouTube, like kids especially, were saying that they were spotting Slender Man and these videos were going viral. I mean, this Slender Man character that was created to be part of a photoshopping contest really came to life to some people. As a matter of fact, there are even Slender Man costumes. Jordan has been Slender Man for Halloween, crazy enough. Like he's the one that told me about Slender Man a long time ago. I'm like, okay, here's another character, right? So now that y'all know who Slender Man is, in 2014, three 12 year old little girls were friends. Well, allegedly they were friends. We'll get more to that at the end, okay? We're gonna talk about the story, I'm gonna tell y'all the story, and then I'm gonna bring up some questions for y'all and give you guys my opinions like I always do. So, three 12 year old little girls who were friends. Now, Morgan, 
has known Bella. Now, Bella's real name is Peyton, but we're going to just call her Bella in this because that's what they called her. Okay, so Morgan and Bella knew each other since kindergarten. They had been friends since kindergarten, but starting in fourth grade, they became best friends friends. Now, according to their parents, Morgan was a loner. She didn't have a lot of friends. I made friends with her when I saw that she didn't have any friends at all. She was always stayed to herself. She was not the popular kid in school, but Bella really took to her. She saw her sitting by herself. She wanted to be her friend. She didn't want her to be lonely and she just became best friends with her and they just loved each other. At some point, Anissa comes into the picture. Now, according to Bella, Anissa never really liked her. They were friends, but anytime she was around Morgan and Anissa at the same time, she felt like Anissa got jealous of her. And that is typical for little girls, okay? Like you got three little girls, there's a lot of the times two of them are really close and one of them feels left out, da 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 da. Well, in this situation, she kind of felt left out, but they still all hung out, they still all played, they still were all friends, right? Okay. At some point, Anissa started going on these websites online and it's this creepy pasta website that I have never even heard of until now. Supposedly there's a lot of like urban legends on there where there's like scary stories and just different things and like Slender Man was all over creepy pasta. So Anissa starts reading about Slender Man and she just like becomes like obsessed with him. She's thinking about him all the time. She's reading about him and she and her 12 year old little mind really, really believe that he is real. She starts telling Morgan about Slender Man and Morgan starts getting into Slender Man. What was found out much later is Morgan actually is diagnosed with schizophrenia. At this time, when she was 12 years old, her parents did not know she was schizo she had schizophrenia, and I don't know if she knew that she had schizophrenia, but Morgan's dad is also diagnosed with schizophrenia and has been li living with it his whole entire life. So when Morgan started learning about Slender Man, she started becoming, like she really believed that she saw him, like she did. The schizophrenia played a part in that too. And her and Anissa just became obsessed with this fictional character. They found out that Slender Man lives in the woods. He lives in a national forest that's over 700,000 acres. He lives in a mansion there. And for whatever reason, these little girls decided that they wanted to prove that Slender Man was real. And in order to do that, they were going to have to become a Slender Man proxy and give Slender Man a sacrifice. Now, once they got the sacrifice and gave the sacrifice to Slender Man, then they could go to the 700,000 acre forest, find his mansion and live there with him for the rest of their lives. <sighs> the two little girls, Anissa and Morgan, decided that their sacrifice to Slender Man was going to be their friend, Bella. They were going to have to kill their friend. And once they did, then they could live with Slender Man forever. Now, also part of it was they were afraid, this is what they said later, was that they were afraid that Slender Man was going to come and kill their whole families if they did not kill their friend. I'm confused by that part because in one part, they say, the little girls say that they wanted to prove that he was real. And in order to do that, then they needed to kill their friend and then they were going to go and live there. Then the other part of them was saying that they were afraid that Slender Man was going to come and kill their whole family. Although it is a little bit confusing, they're 12 year olds. So, you know, that happens. That's absolutely normal. So these two little girls, Morgan and Anissa, they planned this for months, the killing of their best friend. They had all kinds of plans. They actually tried in two different ways and did not succeed. So then they decided at Morgan's birthday party was when they were going to carry out their plan to kill their best friend, run away to the woods, and live forever in Slender Man's mansion. May of 2014, Morgan's birthday party. Now, every year, supposedly, in, on Morgan's birthday, she was allowed to have a sleepover. The night before the sleepover, they went to the three little girls, were taken to the skating rink with the disc of lights, and they're all skating. They got their little backpacks and their little dollies, and they're 12 years old, and they're skating to the music, and they're having a good time. 
Bella the whole time has no idea that her two friends, her two 12 year old friends are plotting to kill her. None of the parents know, nobody knows. They're all just skating and having a good little time, holding hands while they skate, having fun. All three girls are taken back to Morgan's house that night. Morgan's mom said they were running up and down the stairs. They had the Good American dolls. Bella brought her Good American doll to the house. So you imagine you've got your daughter, you're sending your 12 year old baby girl to her friend's house for a slumber party and skating rink and she's packing her little backpack with her Good American doll and her little clothes, you know, and her little PJs and not thinking anything out of the ordinary. But the whole time, the two other little girls are planning to kill her. Next morning after the slumber party, as the two little girls, Anissa and Morgan, are trying to decide, okay, we've got to do this. Like, time is running out. We have got to do this. They tell Morgan's mom that they're going to go just right down the road to a park. Now you've got three 12 year old little girls. They can walk down the road, you know, to a park. All three little girls walk down there. Anissa and Morgan, they have a backpack. In the backpack, they have different things packed. They have water bottles. They have granola bars. They have a knife with a five inch blade. And later this list was found right here. I'm going to show you guys. Pepper spray, map of forest, a camera, a spray bottle, cheesecake, mask and hoodie, the will to live, weapons, a kitchen knife, and flashlight. So as they walk across the street, they're playing at the playground. Of course, the two little girls are huddled up. They're, they're trying to figure out how they're going to be able to do this with the other little girl. And Anissa pulls up her shirt and shows Morgan the, the kitchen knife that she has in her waistband that has the five inch blade on it. And she's letting her know like, okay, it's time. Like we've got to do this. We're going to stab her to death. They go into the bathroom and they're trying to, you know, figure out the two little girls like, okay, let's do it. Like we got to kill her. And at one point, Anissa takes her fist and she hits Bella and her head goes back. Her plan was to knock her out in the bathroom, then drag her into the stall, stab her, kill her and sit her up on the toilet and leave for the forest. But the hit just hurt her and didn't knock her out. So they're like, darn. So the two little girls, they tell Bella, we want to go play hide and go seek in the forest. There was like a little, there was like a little, you know, trees and little forest thing back behind the playground set. Bella did not want to play hide and go seek. She's like, I don't really want to. The two little girls, Morgan and Anissa, they talk her into it. They're like, please, 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 let's play hide and go seek. If you play hide and go seek with us, we'll play whatever you want to play afterwards. So she's like, Okay, I'll play. So they go into the forest to play hide and go seek. While they're in the woods, Morgan and Anissa are talking. And Anissa has the knife and, and Morgan's like, you gotta do this. Like we've got it, we've gotta do this. And Anissa's telling Morgan, I don't want to, like, I can't do this. I got you're gonna have to do the stabbing part. Like, I can't do it. So Anissa, when they get back over to Bella, because they were playing hide and go seek, they get Bella on the ground some way, somehow, and Anissa sits on her stomach. So she's laying on the ground. And Anissa looks up at Morgan and says, go ballistic, go crazy. Don't be afraid, I'm only a little kitty cat. And uh, jumped on top of Bella and stabbed her repeatedly. When she tells her to go ballistic and go crazy, Morgan takes the knife and stabs her friend all over. She's screaming. She's like, what are you doing? You know, she's in the woods with her friends and all of us, they, they just had a slumber party. They've just been skating. It's her birthday. And now she's being stabbed in the woods. Bella tries to get up and they tell her, stay down, stay down. Like, we're going to go get help. We're going to go get help for you, but you'll lose less blood if you stay laying down. They told me to lay down, you'll lose blood slower. Like, we're gonna go get help. Did she try to get up? The, the yeah, she tried thing. to get up. She said that she couldn't see, she couldn't walk, and just that she couldn't breathe. And they told her they were gonna go get her help. But Anissa flat out said, no, we weren't getting her help. We wanted her to die. Well, the two girls run off and they leave her there. Bella could not hardly see. She started to kind of lose her sight. She was struggling to breathe. Obviously, I mean, she'd been stabbed in the chest. She'd been stabbed all over. She was losing blood. Her clothes were all bloody, as you guys can see right here. It was just absolutely a mess. But at some point, Bella, who is an incredibly strong, amazing little girl, 
got up and walked out closer to the road and then fell out. Well, it just so happens that a biker was riding by. Thank God. Now, the crazy situation with this biker is, this is a biker, he never hardly takes this route. But for some reason this day, he decided to take a different route. And when he was riding around this part of this street, he sees this little girl laying in the grass, bleeding. And he, and he stops and he asks her, are you okay? What happened? And she says, my friend stabbed me. I, it's, she was struggling to breathe, struggling to talk. She was saying she could not even see. So he calls 911 and talks to the 911 dispatcher. Appears to be what? Stabbed. Stabbed? Right. Okay. Are you still there? Yes. Hi, sir. So is, are you with this 12-year-old female? Yeah. She says she's having trouble breathing. She said she was stabbed multiple times. Stabbed multiple times? Yeah. Okay, sir, are you with her right now? Yes. Is she awake? She's awake. Is she um, breathing? Yeah, she's breathing. She said she can take shallow breaths. She's alert. Okay, stay with her. We're sending the police department. Don't hang up, okay? Now, the dispatcher calls the police officer and says, hey, look, there's a little girl that's been stabbed. She's and he's thinking, okay, a little girl's been stabbed by her friend. He has probably a pencil, you know, like, oh my gosh, it's the end. You know, he's not thinking what it's going to be. When the cop pulls up... I asked her who did this, and she told me her friend, Morgan. Peyton tells paramedics she's been stabbed. They asked how long was the knife, and she said that the, the knife was about like this. And she was talking about the blade, not the handle. The paramedics get there, they, you know, they get her up, and then they take her to the hospital to try to save her life. When they get her to the hospital and they find out information on her, the cops have to go to Bella's parents' house. Now imagine, my parents out there especially, you have sent your baby girl to her best friend's house since fourth grade. They've known each other since, you're, it's not like you just met this chick. It's not like your friend, your daughter came home from school and had an invitation in her backpack and you took her and dropped her off at some stranger's house. They had spent the night together and had slumber parties numerous of times. Okay, you knew, you know their parents, everything. The cops knocked on her door. Bella's mom opens the door and they said, where is your daughter, Peyton, da, 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 Bella? And they said, oh, she's over at her friend's house. They were trying to make sure like this, you know, make sure that this is the story was accurate. And then they, they told her, your daughter's been hurt. She's been stabbed. And she's like, what do you mean stabbed? So she rushes to the hospital. Bella's mom ends up at the hospital and gets to her daughter literally right as they're about to take her into surgery. I said, you're going to be okay. It's going to be fine. But I could see that she was covered her arms and her legs and her abdomen they were covered in stab wounds bella is like laying there you know she's you know struggling to breathe she's getting ready to go into surgery she's absolutely terrified i mean she'd just been stabbed by her friends left in the woods you know found by a complete stranger on a bike going into surgery she'd never been into surgery before and as bella's mom is trying to calm her she hears the nurses say one of the nurses say okay i count five on this arm seven on this leg da, 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 da. i count 19 in total and the other nurse says i count 19 in total too and the mom is like 19 what like what are you talking about 19 stab wounds like imagine a mother you know it's just oh my gosh this is crazy she goes into surgery and after surgery the doctor comes out and lets her know that one of the stabs that were in her chest for this five inch blade was the width of a hair a piece of hair the width of it from hitting a major artery in her heart. The doctor said if that knife would have hit that major artery in her heart, she would have bled out, had a heart attack, and died right there within minutes. At this point, now the cops, they're looking for two little girls, right? Like, and these cops are looking for these two little girls, but they also know that they could possibly still have a knife. They could possibly be dangerous. I mean, everybody is so confused by this situation. The time we found them, they had walked about five hours and made it to the north end of our city. Morgan Geyser and Anissa Wire are brought back to the Waukesha Police Station for questioning. Their demeanor was very calm. They seemed um, kind of meek. I did notice she had a blood stain on the front of her shirt, and she was wearing two shirts. Okay. What is your name? Anissa Wire. Now, in this state, 
they do not have to have a family member or a parent present. As a matter of fact, the interrogators say that they can get the truth out of kids more if there is no parent there. So, you know, that old saying goes like, you know, wait, let me get my lawyer, any of that. Baby, there was no time for that. They picked these two little girls up and took them right into the room to interrogate them. We'll get to more of that later. As they're interrogating the little girls, they both, neither one of them lied. They both straight up told the truth. They told about Slender Man. Morgan kind of tiptoed around Slender Man at first. I'm not really sure if it was because she was still afraid of Slender Man or not. But both of the girls said that the reason why they stabbed her was because they were afraid of Slender Man, that he was going to kill their families, and that they wanted to go and live in the woods with him. They wanted to be a Slender Man proxy. Morgan seemed like she was very calm, very relaxed. I mean, she's at a police department and she's covered in blood. And this is like a normal day for her. You can hear Morgan ask what's happened to Peyton using her nickname, Bella. Is she dead? I don't know. Uh, she wants to take her to the hospital. I was just wondering. It didn't seem like it really concerned her too much if she was dead or alive. We talk about throwing Bella in the bus at the birthday party. We did sometimes, but we made sure we whispered. Granted, the bus is really loud, but Apple are eavesdroppers. We used code words like for knife, we meant we used cracker. And for the killing, we would use words like itch. There are actually three plans that were devised to kill Peyton. Gordon said that um, at her birthday party, well, Bella was sleeping. We were gonna, um, like, duck her mouth shut, stab her in the neck, and then leave. Anissa explained to me that to prove yourself worthy to Slender, you would have to kill somebody. Morgan then said, we have to kill Bella. It ended up happening to Bella. She did end up surviving and she's been through a lot. I mean, I could just, um, I cannot even imagine the amount of trauma that she's been through. Like, talk about not being able to trust your friends at a young age. And I don't, and I'm not trying to make a joke of that because we've all been there, right? We've all been burned by a friend before, but at 12 years old. I asked her about trust. How will she ever trust anyone again after her friends did this to her? And she admitted that she still sleeps with a pair of scissors underneath her pillow at night. Two of your friends and Peyton has done interviews, Peyton, Peyton is Bella, where she said she had no idea. She was not even suspicious. She not even for a second thought like, oh my gosh, are they, are they planning to do something? So I can only imagine what she's gone through over the years. Uh, she healed. She ended up going actually back to school in fall that year. Like what a trooper. Like she's so such an incredible little girl and she had an amazing support system. Now the two other little girls, Morgan and Anissa, were actually tried as adults, which I was surprised. Now I know that they will do that here, especially in Florida, but I was really surprised that they tried these two little girls as adults, but I don't know, are they making an, you know, I, I don't really know what was all going on there, but one of the little girls, Morgan, the one that was later found out to have schizophrenia, just like her father, she got 40 years in a mental institution. And then the other little girl, Anissa, got 25 years in a mental institution. And I was so glad that they gave the other little girl time in a mental institution as well, because to me, none of it seemed like, like normal. And I hate to use that word normal because what is normal anyways? But typically, kids don't want to hurt anybody. And also, another thing that, and this is what I want to talk to at the end of, with you guys too, typically kids, as far as kids that I've seen, and even me as a kid, and I was a kid that, you know, had been through trauma and PTSD and had mental illness as well, I, as a kid, would never want to go live in a mansion with a monster right? Like I, matter of fact, I want to prove that the monster isn't real. Like I want, turn on the light, look under the bed and, and, and make sure it's not real. But for some reason, these little girls wanted to prove that he was real and wanted to go and live with him. 
that alone should have, should be a red flag. Now, I mean, I'm not saying that if you're into spooky stories and stuff like that, or like you like that type of thing, but like, what 12 year old little girl wants to go live in the woods in a mansion with a monster? Like, who wants, to, what 12 year old little girl wants to be a proxy to a monster? You know, I don't know. So I'm glad that they went more with giving these little girls help versus just putting them in prison forever and ever and ever. It was quite chilling for me to watch. And I will leave some links to their interrogations down below if you guys want to go and watch. It was very chilling for me to watch these interviews with these little girls because the little girls did not seem concerned at all about their friend Bella. They were more concerned with, and I know that they were 12, but still, like if you're a kid, even if you set out to kill somebody, you would think that they would be a little bit concerned, like now that they're caught, like, okay, she, but they were more concerned with, you know, were they going to get in trouble for running away? They, and at one point Morgan asked if she was dead or not. And then she said, oh, I'm just wondering, like, I don't know. And then the, uh, uh, another part when she was doing the interview and they said, do you regret it? And she was like, oh. It was weird. I felt no remorse. I thought I would. Did you feel bad I just stand with your best friends. I thought about it, but then I decided that remorse will get me nowhere. It's easier to live without regrets. That just kind of got me, you know, like absolutely no emotion or no feeling. So another reason why I'm glad that they put her in a mental institution where she could hopefully get some help versus putting her in prison. Because as you guys know, I've told you guys prison stories about the mentally ill in there. And I hope that they're getting the help that they need. I also wanted to mention, now this is just my speculation and I don't know, but the fact that Bella or Peyton, same person, said that she always felt like Anissa kind of didn't like her and Anissa was jealous of her and Morgan's relationship. It does make me wonder if that's where the whole like really going deep into the Slender Man and really like wanting to sacrifice somebody to Slender Man, you know, because she really wanted to be with Morgan and run away with Morgan as her best friend and be best friends with her. Like I, I would be... Man, I would love to know if that was a train of thought at some point because little, you know, little girls get jealous of each other. I mean, little girls don't get jealous of each other and try to kill each other typically, but I don't know. It just, it seems, it seems bizarre. And that's just my thought and speculation. I could be totally off base. So that, that's my, that was just a thought. And I also thought that it was really chilling that Morgan, when she was doing her interrogation, she tells the interrogator, it was a flawless plan, really. Like, she was so chill about it, like... So you decided a while ago that in the sleep overnight that this is when you came in? Yeah. Why do you think it was your sleep overnight that your Because sleep overnight? it was, we were all, we would all be together. It was a flawless plan, actually. I don't know, you guys. It was, it was... It was not only interesting, but very bizarre to see why children would want this, why children would want to do this, you know? Some of you guys are really into spooky, scary stuff like that. You tell me why you think they would want to do this, other than like mental illness. Like what would be the train of thought of why, yes, this would be it? You know, like, yes, I want to kill my friend versus... Like, I'm terrified of this thing, and I want to tell my mom because I'm scared, and I think it's going to come and get us, and we've got to, you know, like, why? Instead of that, their plan was, let's kill our friend, run away, and live in a mansion with a monster. You know what I mean when those are your options as a little girl? Now, with all of this being said, I just want to take this time to remind you guys, and I've talked about this in other videos. I know not all of you guys watch all of my videos. Please, for the love of God, make sure you're paying attention to what your kids are into. You need to be in their business. You you know, little kids especially, like what privacy, what do you mean? Like that is a whole parenting video there. And I'm not saying that these parents necessarily did anything wrong. Like hindsight is always 2020, right? Like 
I can sit up here and like be the backseat driver of somebody's life and be like, you should have done this and you should have done that. And that's not at all what I'm trying to do. But like, as I always say, like a smart man learns from his mistakes, but a wise man learns from other people's mistakes. We really need to be paying attention. The internet is scary, you guys. Like, I know some of y'all are gonna get mad at me when I say this, but people that are just freaking taking cell phones and iPads that have Safari and Google Chrome and handing it to children, that way they can read and see and message and do whatever they want with whoever they want, I don't think that's a good idea, you guys. I don't. I know for me personally, my son, my baby boy, he has an iPad. Safari is blocked on it. All of that stuff is blocked on it. Like, he does not have free run of the internet. Any app that he uses, you know, I check out. If you guys did not watch my video, this one right here, I learned a hard lesson with that. Go and watch that. You guys, please, please, please. The internet is a very scary place. And please be paying attention to what your kids are reading, watching, listening to, believing. All right, my loves, what do you guys think about this? Have you heard about this story? What are your opinions? Thank you guys so much for watching this video. As always, please do not forget to like it. It's a free way that you can help your girl out. And until next time, I love you guys so, so, so very much. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye. Love you guys. Bye.